Okay. In this session, we're going to quickly look at the data query language to retrieve data. Now, what you will see this is a very quick mention on the objectives to this. And we're going to quickly look at the syntax of the select statement the, to distinguish between projection and selection to limit columns and rows later on. And then to understand how to order your results, it, to use the stink and top to arrange your data in terms of that. And then also going to look at predicates and comparison with logical operators also. The influence of logical operator precedence and understanding aliasing. Okay. So, <coughs> some of the statements which we can add in a select statement, if you want to find the full list of this, you can open up uh, the um, Microsoft's notes on this and they have quite an extensive arrangement to this. Now, some of the basic clauses which we will be working with is just the select, where order by, group by, having, where the select statement can have a number of arrangements, where it tells us which rows we want to retrieve to limit to actual rows, order by tells us in which sequence this data must be structured or ordered, group by is saying that if we'd like to retrieve the average price per number of products or per type of product, we are making a specific grouping. And then having, we can actually go and say, but all products having a average price higher than five, where the, for the specific type of product to sell. This allows us to work with group by statements where the way restricts only rows having restricts the groups of data but we'll get to it okay so the basic simple select which we know of looks as this select then a column list from your actual tables okay then we're going to specify which columns we are working with then we're going to retrieve only those specified columns for all the rows okay if there's no weight clause specific specified in this case we're going to retrieve all the rows okay now if you are placing for example an asterisk like that you are telling it to retrieve all the columns which we might have now this is not always very nice to use this in a production environment because there might be a number of columns and even if you join tables together it's going to bring back a very big result set for you okay so a general query principle is only to retrieve and only to query the things which you are going to use and work with based on that okay so there's quickly a mention of projection or column selection now projection is a relational algebra operation whereby all rows from those specified columns are retrieved and this is achieved by stating a column list in our select statement to limit the actual columns which we're working so some of the advantages of this only return the needed columns and it boosts performance because we cut down on actual traffic okay so for example in this case we're selecting the employee id the first name middle initials and the last name from your employee table simple as this <coughs> then we can go and perform a distinct now distinct allows us to retrieve unique combinations of column values so it removes any duplicate values for us so in this case it is select distinct first names now we can also tell it to retrieve a specific number of rows or percentage of rows. Note that you cannot just put the percentage sign here. You need to write out the word top 20%. Okay, will the top 20 and top 20% always be the same number of rows?
No. If you have a thousand rows in your table, top 20 is only going to bring back 20 rows. Top 20% is going to be? Okay, it's quite different. So please take note of that. Then there's order by. Now we can also specify the sequence or direction in which your result set must be ordered. Now the basic syntax just continues still your select statement. Order by column 1 and its direction. Column 2 and its direction. Now the directions which we can have is over ascending or descending to tell it in specific directions. So for example select everything from tables offers order by state ascending comma zip descend okay. on the last statement are we ordering by alphabetic order on that column the entries yeah. zip no the last one select order by then select no that other one before you mentioned this one yeah this one Okay, keep in mind that this is only example of the syntax. It doesn't really tell us in which sequence we are sorting the data. It just gives you an example of how to write it. This is the actual example. Okay, why do we have square brackets here? State, in some cases, is considered a reserved word, so you need to delimit it like placing it either in square brackets or in quotes. Okay. So quickly, selection allows us to choose the actual rows and this can limit the actual rows which will be brought back. So it will limit it based on your selection criteria and evaluate to only those which are, are true which matches your specified set condition. Now, this is achieved by adding the WHERE clause. Now, the WHERE clause specifies the search condition, also called the predicates for the rows returned by the query. Now, your predicates can be placed in some form of logical sequence, where the best place is normally to start with the thing which identifies the records you want to work with uniquely, the identifier, and then other predicates based on that. Okay, so it's still good practice to put your parentheses, your brackets around them, uh, to sort your predicates in some conditions or sequence of logic. Okay, so what we are seeing is that we can have relationship-based operators, smaller than, greater than, all of those where you actually are testing values. So this can be used for numeric and character values. And then we can combine this with relationship operators and that all. You can also have not. And so... Uh, not explicit ors. <laughs> you can check up on that. Yeah. And then we can also have free valued logic, true, false, or unknown. Okay. So where your unknowns is really the values when uh, nulls are included, you're actually unsure of what is this value. Okay. Now, please take note that you cannot go and compare null to null. So we can't say... You can't say this, where the address is equal to null. The reason for this is um, address is representing a specific value or some place or so where null is an unknown or is unspecified value. I like to compare null to infinity. Why? Because in mathematics, can you go and say infinity is equal to infinity plus one? No, you can't. 
So if you're working with limits in mathematics, you can't even do this. You can't go and compare the two to, to each other. So the only way in which you can do this comparison by saying is null. Is address null. So if we had to write the same thing as we're going to say where where address is null. Okay. So that allows us to go and compare. Is this value null? You can't use an equal sign. Go and test it a bit. Okay. Uh, please go and test this. Okay. What is the purpose of not? Same as what you had previously in binary logic, where not performs negation, it changes the actual value around. Okay. Then there's an example where they're using the selection, so retrieve all the columns from the office table where the state is California or CA and the city is Auckland. Okay, then retrieving all the publisher where the state is now. Okay, so now in that case they're achieving to bring back everything where there's no currently defined state. Then there's a mention also about negation and using the not where not state is null. What will be returned here? Firstly, it's got to go and evaluate this to check first for all the states which is null. Then it's going to bring back all the opposites of that because we have not there. Should we place the, our where conditions according to the arrangement of uh, columns, where the column starts and to the where the We're going to look at that now. Because what you are mentioning is this, yeah. is in which sequence do we place our predicates? Yeah. Because if we are looking at, yes, even exactly in this one, if we are looking at this, in what sequence should we work on this? Um, if you are wanting to work with one specific record, start with the thing which identifies that thing uniquely. It's identifier. But if you don't have something like that, let's say we would like to go smaller and we would only have address information on something. We can go and say, but I would like to work with the state. Where can we then go? The city. And then? Street. Okay. If you start at street, what is going to happen? It would probably get all the streets by that specific name. So you can even start with this. But is you also is still smart enough or will still find it correctly for you? For the same time. <laughs> yes. If you have a lot of data where you are um, joining between multiple tables and you have thousands or thousands of records which you need to query, then that makes a difference. Okay. Now, there's also a mention about uh, having multiple operators and actual precedence and parenthesis, which can be placed. Okay, so the order of your execution can significantly be affected by this. Okay. So this is similar to those math examples where you are subtracting values without parenthesis and all of that. Um, so your operators on the higher level in the table are evaluated before those on the lower level. What are we seeing? We have, in this case, bitwise knots. Multiply, division, or modulus, positive, negative, subtraction, or bitwise. And your comparison operators 
bitwise exclusive all bitwise all not and all any between in like and then even finally the assignment so that table is the priority saying this is going yes. to be evaluated first yeah so it's similar to mathematics if we're talking about plus minus division modulus um, it's similar to that yes it, it talks about which will be evaluated first in terms of that okay then there's quickly lastly a mention about aliasing now aliasing is the process where we are assigning a temporary name to a column well, in that case, we have this AU underscore ID. It's a very bad name because it doesn't describe that column properly. So in this case, they are using the keyword as or for ID. So you can use aliases on columns, but you can use it on calculations, and you can use it on tables even. So quickly temporarily naming a table or even derived tables this can be used for. Okay. So they use a few examples of it and they either concatenated this information to give a, the first name with a space with the last name to make it author's full name. Okay. Then there's also mention quickly of some notes about retrieving data. Uh, so when you are looking to return data you must ask yourself, what are they asking me to return? What values do you want to get back? What column must be returned for the given select statement? Okay, this will give you the actual column list. Okay, where is the, is the columns located that, must, that you must return? In what table is this data? Because later on we're going to start to work with joins and subqueries. That is where this comes to play. Is there any selection or condition for the given select statement according to which those rows must be retrieved? Is there some weight clause which you need to incorporate? Okay. State and identify any additional information that is required. Order by a distinct top. Calculations. Okay. So then there's lastly, very quick exercise to do five statements okay you have something like select from table where something something order by this yes so just based on that what is the proper syntax of a select if you're doing that So what we're seeing is that the basic statement we know looks just like select from, where, order by, group by. You can add the rest of the stuff in there, distinct, top can be added in there. From,
that's not a, this is not a very good example because we actually need to look at an actual table to design according to that. But what are we seeing is it statement, select from where. Then you can have order by, group by, and add the rest of the things in to match what the question is asking you to do. So in this, retrieve all employee information. Select star from employees. Retrieve the publisher ID and name for all publishers located in the US. Okay, so that would be select which column, this column, and that column. From publishers. Where? That's it. Yeah. So some combination of that can be used to achieve this. Okay. Any questions on using these statements? Okay. They are fairly easy to use. Okay. You must enjoy your